Where is she? <sighs> hmm. Let me see. Yep, she should be here by now. All right. Well. Oh, I'm looking forward to this weekend. I can't wait to get away. Go to the Galvez, some powerful worship, praise and worship, ministry, Bible teaching by Teresa Nix. It is going to be amazing. Oh, the Galvez, I'm going to turn off my phone. No homeschooling, I'm not even going to feed the dog. That's right, it's all about me this weekend. It's going to be fabulous, yes. Okay, Lena, Lena. Lena, where are you? Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's about time. Okay, I'll talk to you. Oh, excuse me. Lena. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lena. Hey. What are you wearing? What you said we're going to the beach? Um, well, we're going to the beach, yes, but we're going to the ladies' Bible retreat in what? Galveston, but Teresa Nix is going to be there. She's a special guest speaker. This is the first time that Linda Crawford has hosted such an event for the ladies. It's going to be... Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, do you... What else do you have there? I mean, do you... Well, I guess I won't be needing this if we're going to be... I but hey, I got my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you certainly do. Yeah, it won't get wet, you know. <laughs> All right, well, let's go. Let's do it. All, All right, right, I love you. You look good. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Okay, that was all about our ladies' retreat that we're having in October the 24th through the 26th. And if you have not registered, there will be somebody in the back tonight. And you can pay a deposit. You can put $10, $15, $20 down to hold your space because we were only able to get so many rooms. And we're wanting to max out the retreat at 300 ladies. And there's, you can get four to a room, three to a room, two to a room, or be in a room by yourself. So all the prices are back there, so if you want to know more information, there's a flyer, you can take it with you, there's a registration form on the flyer, you can mail it back into the church. Uh, you can go online and register, but if you do that, you also have to go into um, our um, quail.org, um, I think it is, or either freedomcenterchurch.com, and go into PayPal and just put a deposit that way or pay your full amount. So however you want to do it, just do it because you don't want to miss out on this. We're going to have a fabulous weekend kicking off Thursday night with something fun we're going to do with a mixer sort of thing, just a meet and greet and a reception. And then you're kind of on your own for dinner that night. And Friday morning we'll get up, have breakfast together, have a powerful meeting together. Then you're going to have about five hours to spend in Galveston going to the Strand or doing whatever you want to do. And then we will meet back together that night for another meeting and dinner and close it out Saturday with breakfast and a meeting. So we want you to be a part of that. Whether you're a member of our church, come to Girls' Night Out all the time. If you've got friends you want to bring, that's cool. Money talks, so you got to sign up, okay? Okay, good. All right, that's out of the way. I've got several announcements I have to make here. <clears throat> okay, first thing I want to do is recognize our decorator girls. Wherever y'all are, stand up on me. Thank you. They spent the day up here today decorating our beautiful tables, and they didn't cook the hamburgers, but they were here decorating, <laughs> and we had fun doing that. Um, visitors, anybody here for the first time tonight? Stand up, let's see where you are. All right. Very good. So good having you girls with us. If you did not get a little card or something when you came in, there's some back there you can fill out. We just kind of like to know, you know, your name and where you're from, and um, we won't bug you. If you want to be on our mailing list, we'll put you on our mailing list, and we send a card out every month to remind you about Girls' Night Out. So if you want us to do that, you can sign up in the back for that. We also have prayer cards back there. If you have a prayer need, we have intercessors that pray over the prayer needs, so please write your prayer request on that for us. Okay, now we have a little family business we need to take care of. And I say that because, um, you know, in James 2, it talks about faith without works is basically dead. And we're supposed to be doing something with our faith. 
And we can talk God all the time, but if we're not doing something with our feet, with our hands, with our mouth, we're not serving the way we're supposed to. Mm. <laughs> and I get choked up over this because, you know, when you receive something from somebody, it's easy to give back to somebody. But sometimes when you've never been on the receiving end of something, you just think, what's that all about, Alfie? But um, we have needs that come up periodically in our body, and we always are able to meet those needs through our home groups or through our greeters or whatever area that happens to be. That group gets together, cooks meals or ministers or whatever needs to be done. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but we thought it would be wonderful for this group of ladies to be able to be a part of reaching out your hands to touch someone else's hands and minister spirit, soul, and body to families. So what we've done, we have a list in the back. Now, if you're a member of Freedom Center Church or you come on a regular basis and maybe have not joined the church yet, we would like to um, just ask you if it's in your heart to do this and pray about it because we don't want people just to sign their name to something if they're not serious about it. But we want you to sign up back there with your name, email, and phone number, and we will put you on a rotating list. If a need comes up for a family that needs a meal, whether it be maybe a lady who just had a baby, uh, right now we're walking, out, uh, walking something out with a family, the Rooker family, and praise God, we have not had to pull on the same people all the time because we have such a good group of ladies rotating through. But this is a long-term thing that we've taken on with them. But there's other needs that have come up too. So if that's you and you know that you're supposed to be doing this, maybe you can't do it all the time, but a meal every once in a while or uh, in, in what, Stevie Benoit, where are you? No, stand up a minute. And Renee Vieira, are you here too? I don't know if Renee's here tonight or not. Okay, anyway, these two ladies, um, Stevie has kind of taken on the Rookers to kind of get that coordinated, and she's doing something through the Internet where, um, and we will, whoever gets on this list, these two ladies will contact you and tell you more about it. But whenever there's a need, you'll be getting an email. It'll tell you how to go onto this calendar, plug in the day you want to cook. And, of course, it has to be organized. So everybody can't just be calling these people and dropping food off at their house. We need to know that it's organized and done decently and in order. So I don't want to labor it, but this is kind of something that we've prayed about and we feel like starting with this group of ladies, and even if you come into Girls' Night Out regularly, and a lot of ladies come here, this is their home. So if that's you, just sign up and then we'll get in touch with you. <coughs> the other thing we want to share, and we're really excited about this too, we're doing something that we um, did last year with the Darrington Prison Unit called Day with Dad. And um, this is the, the dads that are incarcerated have signed up for the program and the children of these, um, these incarcerated men, their caregivers bring them over to a church and they're bused in to, to spend the day with their father. Well, the caregivers stay behind. So what we're doing, and it's not just our church, there's several other churches involved, but Linda Crawford has taken this Upon, her, upon herself, her shoulders, um, to um, meet with these other churches and just kind of be the um, spokesman and running what we're getting ready to do with the caregivers. But we're going to have a day of pampering for the caregivers on that Saturday, November the 9th. And they'll be getting a spa treat, like a mini spa treatment, nails, facials, different things like that. But how we want you girls involved, uh, the September meeting which I think it might be on the 30th. I can't remember the last Tuesday. Okay, the last Tuesday, our meeting. Okay, if you have purses, jewelry, scarves, some accessory that you're not using, we want you to bring it to that meeting because what we're going to do is we're going to put the jewelry in nice boxes. We're going to have the scarves maybe in boxes. Now, the purses, we, we don't want just purses you're tired of using and they're junk or whatever, because we all have stuff like that, where it's a favorite, you don't want to get rid of it, but you just think, well, it's worn on the bottom, but it, let it be something that's maybe a treasure to you and you want to say, I want to bless somebody. Now, we don't want one woman bringing 10 purses in, which 
I know I could easily do that myself, but we, because if everybody in here brought 10 purses, we would have too many purses. <laughs> so we just want you to pray about what you're supposed to bring. And then what we'll do at that September meeting, we'll gather it all together. We'll have a team of ladies that will be organizing, getting this ready. And, I, and the reason we have to start it in September, because we do not have an October meeting because it's a week of our fall festival, which is October 31st. We do not have a November meeting for Girls Night Out because it is Thanksgiving. But we do have our Christmas meeting, which I believe is December 2nd. So we won't be meeting again after our September meeting. So if you know you have something you want to bring, just bring it up here. We will take it from you. We'll get it ready. And then we will make sure it gets into the boutique, we're calling it, um, for these caregivers on that Saturday that they bring these children to meet their father. Now, we do have a need for a few more ladies to be a part of our pampering team. We don't need a whole lot of ladies, but if that's something you might wanna do, it's a commitment from eight in the morning to four in the afternoon. You will not be going into the prison, so you don't have to worry about that. It will be at a, a church where we'll be in Siena? Vicksburg, okay. <clears throat> Okay, it'll be in Vicksburg, and so if that's you and you want to be involved in that, and, and you probably won't even be there all day, but we just have to say make the commitment, and then we will say, okay, we need you on this team for the morning, or we need you on this team for the afternoon. And there again, we have a team of ladies um, that will be heading this up and, and uh, where these caregivers will be pampered and taken care of and treated like queens because... This is a big undertaking that they're doing, raising grandkids and raising children of incarcerated parents, and sometimes both parents are incarcerated. So it's something that's a very big need. So I just wanted to make you aware of those two needs that we have, and um, thank you for your patience that as we talk about that as on a family level. And now we have a praise report I want to share. Uh, a couple of months ago, we prayed for a lady by the name of Sarah that... Um, she was diagnosed with cancer, and there was a baby involved. The baby was born, and the doctors pretty much had told her, you're not going to make it. Well, the good news is, and this is a friend of Miss Joyce's, and uh, Sarah's mother is also a pastor's wife. Um, we prayed, and the, the tumor has shrunk, which is a good report. And... All the cancer is gone except for this tumor. And there's two more um, routes of treatment and a surgery that they're talking about doing. But this woman, because of prayer and God's healing touch, has come from the doctors telling her, you're not going to make it. You will not even be able to be around your baby and to hear. We hear this report tonight. So I just want to thank you girls for praying and standing. <clears throat> with Sarah and we have many needs in the body right now and we know everybody's under attack in one way or the other but I mean there's too many needs to mention right now but we know that this is a praying group of ladies Amen. and when we get serious with our prayer God hears our prayer Amen. so I just want to encourage y'all I'm gonna pray and if there's somebody that's on your heart just where you're sitting tonight just lift them up to the throne room and ask the Lord just to put a special touch upon them tonight because they may be in the same fix Sarah was in. I mean, we've, got, we've got a lot of people in our body right now that we're standing with in that condition. Well, Father, we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Father, what you've already done in this meeting tonight. It's so good, Lord God, to come into your house and worship, to have fellowship and break bread, Lord God. And, Father, we're excited when we hear these praise reports, Father. And for sweet Sarah. So, Lord, we're going to continue praying for her, Father. That tumor will be gone in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, as we right now just lift up that person that we know that we're standing in the gap for, that person that we're believing for a miracle to take place in their life, Father, that this group of women, Lord God, prayer warriors for you, Father God, on the front lines every day, Father. And we thank you, Father God, for answered prayer. And we thank you what you're, what you're doing, Father God, now, what you will do, Lord God, in the lives of these people, Father. We thank you, Lord, for every woman who entered this room tonight. 
the ones that stood up for the first time as visitors, Father. We thank you, Father, they feel at home, that this is a safe place for people to be, Lord. So, Father, as the night goes on and we go into praise and worship and the ministry of your word and prayer time, we thank you that you would be glorified tonight, Lord God, and we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory in his precious name. Amen. Why don't you stand? Let's worship.
Your clouds give up the rain Your sun gives up the sunshine Your sky gives up the wind Your mountains rise to bless you Your oceans give you waves Your angels give you glory Your children sing your praise You are worthy So deserving Everything you've given me I give back to you and pray You are my king. I surrender to you. I give you everything. I will humbly bow down. All my life I will bring. I surrender to you, Jesus. And I give you everything. I give you everything. Your word gives us a promise. Your word gives us a hope. Your love gives us the power to live for you alone. You are worthy, so deserving. Everything you've given me, I give back to you and pray. Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my King. I surrender to you. I give you everything. I will humbly bow down, all my life I will pray. I surrender to you, Jesus, and I give you everything. I give you everything. Yeah. Your love has left me no other choice but to get up on my feet and tell the world just how good. Just how good you've been to me So I lift my hands up to the sky I lift my voice up to the heavens And I praise you Yes, I praise you Your love has left me no other choice To get up on my feet And tell the world just how good Just how good you've been to me So I lift my hands up to the sky I lift my voice up to the heavens And I praise you Yes, I praise you. Your love is left me no other choice but to get up on my feet and tell the world just how good, just how good you've been to me. So I lift my hands up to the sky, I lift my voice up to the heavens, and I praise you. Yes, I praise you. Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my King. I surrender to you. Give you everything. I surrender to you, Jesus, and I give you everything. Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my King. I surrender to you. Give you everything. I will humbly bow down. All my life I will bring. I surrender to you, Jesus, and I give you everything. Let my spirit work. 
worship yours. I open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth. You are worthy. You are worthy. down my busy mind and find a hiding place worthy you are worthy Lord you are worthy so I open up my heart and let my spirit worship yours I open up my mouth let a song of praise come forth. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Of a childlike faith, of an honest praise, of my honesty. busy mind and 
find a hiding place And then again You're calling me to lay aside The worries of my day To quiet down my busy mind And find a hiding place Sing it again You're calling me to lay aside The worries of my day To quiet down my busy mind and find a hiding place You are worthy You are worthy You are worthy You are worthy, Lord You are worthy
give myself to you. Sing it again. Life is not my own. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Oh, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself. I give myself.
worship you, Lord. You're worthy of our praise. Lord, we speak your praise. We declare your praise. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. to be seen. I needed it. It was good for my soul, and I know it was good for your soul. First of all, who is glad summer is officially over? <laughs> Both hands. Both hands. Um, do we have any teachers and school staff here tonight? Any teachers or school staff? Stand up. You're our heroes. You're our heroes. And our homeschool moms, we honor you as well. We do. You're our heroes. We bless you, and we pray you've had a good first two days back. And we prayed for you on Sunday and prayed for our students. Um, yes, I am very glad summer is over. It's been a wild ride at the Crawford House <laughs> this summer. And um, we had a milestone in our family uh, several weeks ago, our middle daughter, Caitlin, Grace, Katie Bug, got married, and I sh brought a few pictures to share with you. Isn't she glowing? And um, it was absolutely, it was perfect. I know for you moms that have gone through this before, this was my first one, and you know, you plan and you plan and you prepare, and then... I said, God, you have to take over. And, and I did, and I enjoyed my daughter's day. I really, really did. It was just, it was just beautiful. It was holy. And, um, but you know what? When you are preparing emotionally for an event like that, um, and by the way, I don't know if you really do prepare for that emotionally, but um, I found myself doing a lot of reflection. And I asked myself some hard questions. And one of them was, have I given my daughters, I have three adult daughters, have I given my daughters the tools that they need to be a successful godly woman? In spite of all my human failures, and there are many, 
have I been a good enough example of what a godly woman's supposed to look like? That's a loaded question, huh? In the mid-80s, I began my walk as a young Christian wife and, and, wom and young woman. And I would dare, dare say that it is much tougher in 2013 to be that woman than it was 30 years ago. And there's for several reasons. First of all, if you haven't noticed, there's an all-out demonic attack that is trying to redefine who we are as women. It used to be kind of subtle in that attack. It's blatant. It's in our face. It's obstinate. Secondly, I think it's a lot tougher for women in this generation just because of the fast-paced world that we live in. Life was more simple 30 years ago. Greg and I was, were talking the other day, and we said, 30 years ago, they wouldn't have dared to put a school activity on Wednesday night. Right? Because that was prayer meeting. We had prayer meeting. And they wouldn't have thought to put a soccer game on Sunday afternoon because that was a holy day. You just didn't do that. Now there's no boundaries. It takes intentionality to have a family meal, doesn't it? It really does. But that's why more than ever, we must run to the Word of God the Word of God, and let it define who we are as women. There is a lost and a hurting world that's out there, and they're crying out, show me what it looks like. Show me what it looks like. I am so thankful for the one who says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change, nor has his word changed. Tonight, our topic is being a Proverbs 31 woman in 2013. Now, before you start throwing tomatoes at me and mumbling under your breath, um, we're going to watch a little clip on what some people feel the true Proverbs 31 woman looks like. Here we go. A wife of noble character. Who can find her? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence That's not Greg, in her, by the way. And he lacks nothing of value. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships. Bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. <laughs> Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable. And her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distant and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household. All of them are clothed in scarf. <laughs> she makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. 
She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. <laughs> she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessing. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned. And let her works bring her praise at the city gate. <clears throat> okay, raise your hand if you ever felt that that's what it's supposed to look like. Um, I know so many times we have an aversion to Proverbs 31. We just hear that scripture and go, ugh, 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 because we feel like we have to be super woman in order to be that godly woman. Tonight, we are tearing down that fallacy, okay? That is not what the Proverbs 31 woman um, is supposed to look like. And I want to say in advance, as we, before we get into the scripture, we are all a work in progress. I do not want us to compare ourselves with anyone here. Um, and if anyone feels like their toes are being stepped on, I promise that I've had mine bandaged up with Neosporin and bandages all week long, and I put some in the back just in case you need to find those afterwards, okay? Um, you know, in all seriousness, God's word is not meant to condemn us, is it? We're not to feel a guilt trip when we read God's word. What it's supposed to do is light a light on our path so we will know where we need to go. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, to study, to show yourself approved unto God, and that's what we're doing tonight, a workman or woman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That means understanding this word, for the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. That's what we're going to do tonight. Joints and marrow, and this is the key. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our heart. The Word is like a big old honking flashlight on our heart, and we're going to let it examine our heart. So go ahead, and if you dare, turn to Proverbs 31. Although we are not going to be studying verses 1 through 9 this evening, I do want us to look at verse 1 to search for clues on the author of this very famous chapter. Verse 1 says, The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. There has been a lot of debate on who King Lemuel actually is or was. Some believe that he was a king from a distant land, but many scholars believe that Lemuel was a pseudonym for King Solomon. This was an endearing term by his mother Bathsheba, and it meant devoted to God. And these verses are advice from his mother about how he should carry himself and conduct himself with wisdom as king. She knew the temptations that he would be under and the responsibilities that he would have to face in this position. In the verses that we're going to study tonight, verses 10 through 31, some scholars believe that this is a continuation um, of her teaching, and it's done in an acrostic poem. If you go back in your school days, ladies, an acrostic poem is a poem where letters are written vertically, and in this case, it's consecutive letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and then there are verses that are written out for each letter. And it's just like we do for the kids in school. It's so that they can memorize this more easily. These verses 
that we're going to be studying are a list of qualities for her son to look for in someone he wishes to marry. The question for us tonight is, are we using this same God-inspired list to teach our sons in, in, in evaluating the characteristics they want in a wife? And on the other hand, are we using this same list to teach our daughters these are the attributes that they need to possess in order to be the wife and mother that God wants them to be? On vacation, we were talking about this subject, and I asked Gregory, I said, Gregory, what qualities, my son's 13, by the way, I said, Gregory, what qualities do you want in a wife someday? And he's a little embarrassed about me asking him this question, and he finally sheepishly said, well, she needs to cook good. I said, well, yes, she does need to cook good. That's important. But I went, hmm, I need to work on this list with my son. We got to go from on from there. Let's start in verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. First of all, let's begin by defining that word virtuous. In today's terms, if you look that word up or if you ask someone on the street, they would say, well, it probably means pure, purity, chaste. The original meaning of that word is a lot deeper. It meant worthy or excellent. And in fact, if you go to the Strong's commentary, that Hebrew word is chayil, C-H-A-Y-I-L. And that word, chayil, means a force. Valor, strength, able, worthy, powerful, courageous, and excellence. In the Bible, this word chayil is used over 200 times to describe an army, a force. Ladies, in light of the true meaning of this word, if we live our lives, desiring to possess these attributes, we should be a force to be reckoned with. Amen. The Proverbs 31 woman is no wimp. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're no wimp. You're no wimp. You're no wimp. The passage opens with a rhetorical question. Who can find a virtuous wife? This question ponders that a virtuous woman is hard to find. She's somewhat elusive. What it's saying is you had better look hard because this one is a rarity. One commentary noted that a man thinks he's marrying Rachel and he wakes up next to Leah. He's been deceived. He didn't, get, he didn't get what he think he was getting. We must take the time. Listen to me. We must take the time to impress upon our sons and our daughters and the people that are in our realm of influence that these qualities that we're about to look at are what will truly bring them love, joy, and life to their home. In fact, it goes on to say that when you find this virtuous woman, and you can't find her, her value or worth is much more than precious stones, much more than rubies or diamonds. She's invaluable. You're invaluable. No quantity of precious stones can be equal to her worth. We could go to Jared's right now, and all of those diamonds would not be equal to your worth. I love the next verse. Verse 11. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. In the New Living Translation, it says, she will greatly enrich his life. I asked Greg what that scripture meant to him. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. And he said, well, 
It's much more than sexual fidelity. That's a given. He said it means that he can safely share his thoughts with her. He can share his dreams. He can be completely vulnerable. She's not going to laugh at him. She's not running around talking about him. He knows she believes in him. She's going to take care of his house and of his children. I think the key word in this verse is the word trust. Trust. We must take that word seriously with both our earthly husband and our eternal husband. Ladies, we must keep our word. We must follow on through on instructions that we are given. You know, one way, to, one way to build trust in a marriage relationship is to do what we've been asked to do. Don't try to second guess the whys behind the instruction. I've gotten in a lot of trouble, by the way, for doing that one. Be careful with the advice that you give and only ask questions if you need to. Because in the end, your goal is to follow through with what you've been asked to do and to trust God with what you don't understand. Beverly Juno taught us that principle very well, if you remember. Someone wrote, The heart of a husband who can trust a loyal wife is a heart that's at ease, a heart at rest. When a wife lifts her wife in such a solid way, and I'm going to add to this, not a perfect way, but a consistent way, her husband will never worry or wonder about her character or her management of her home, their family, their finances, or her time. Verse 12, she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. The message, Bible says, never spiteful. She treats him generously all her life long. I looked up some synonyms of the word generous, and I found these words. Helpful, considerate, lavish, thoughtful, unsparing, ungrudging, kind-hearted, and unselfish. You know, with all of the responsibilities that we have on our plate, the list that we have to get done, the bills that we have to pay, to do my husband good and to treat him generously, I'm going to have to be very intentional in making that happen. Do you agree with me? You know, I think overall I do a decent job with taking care of the daily. I make sure his clothes are ready and there's food in the refrigerator and um, dinner's going to be around six. Um, you know, I try to take care of those daily things. But it's those little things. Is there sugar-free orange jello in the refrigerator? <laughs> now that's love. That's love for my husband. When the dishes are still in the sink, and he says, come on, babe, let's watch Monday Night Football. And I go, let's do it. That's love. That's lavish. And, um, and I was thinking about our eternal husband. How many times in the middle of the day do we just stop and go, I love you. What would I do without you? God loves it when we sacrifice that time, when we turn off the radio in that car and we just start spontaneously singing to our eternal husband. He loves that. It thrills his soul. The key is we must be intentional with our love with showing kindness and goodness. And you know, it's interesting because if you look at that verse, it doesn't say she does him good because he does her good. It doesn't say because he treats her generously, she'll treat him generously. Her actions are not dependent on his. There is a great book called The Love Dare. Have any of you read it? The Love Dare? Yes. Oh, great book. 
It's at any Christian bookstore, probably Barnes & Noble. And it, what it is is a 40-day challenge to love someone intentionally, regardless of their response, regardless. And it really gives you focus on for 40 days how to do that. And this book has healed a lot of relationships. So I encourage you about that book. Um, there are three reasons we're going to look at tonight why her husband or why trust, Christ can trust her. And these are not listed in the order of their priorities, but in the order that's listed from our text. Number one, she's a skillful and hard worker. Number two, she has the heart qualities and characteristics that inspire her activities. And number three, she fears God. Number one, she's a skillful and hard worker. Let's look at verse 13. It says, she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. The key phrase here is, she willingly works. There is nothing in this woman that is lazy. And in case you haven't noticed, we live right now in a world of entitlement. Have you noticed that? We live in a world of entitlement. We live in a world of self-absorption. Me, me, me. We will be remiss if we do not teach our children a work ethic. We will be remiss. We need to teach our children to roll up their sleeves and work no matter what the task is. You know, it's one thing for us to work super hard, but sometimes we squirm, don't we, when we see our kids struggle. Have you ever been that way? You just, oh, I want to take off that load from them. And we sense it's become too much of a burden, so we go there and rescue them. <sighs> sometimes we may need to do that, but might a little sweat, might a little struggle, even a little pain, accomplish God's objectives for their lives, for maturing them for what they'll need ahead. Do you all agree with that? Verse 14 continues, She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. The words, she rises while it is yet night, describes her concern for others. This woman gets up really early in the morning. Basically, she's selfless. She gives of herself to take care, not just of her family, but for others. Moms, I encourage you, and especially you newer moms that are doing this school thing, you are like the Holy Spirit to your home. You set the mood and the tone for the mornings. I just encourage you, if you have elementary children, get your children in bed early, between 7.30 and 8.30. It is so important. Make sure their clothes are laid out at night. Make sure the lunches are done. They're done. That little prep work is going to save you a lot of grief in the morning. And when you get up in the morning, you're not going to be frantic running around. You're going to be able to go take that run. You're going to be able to go have that cup of coffee and get alone with God because you're going to need it, okay? And then, you know that saying, when mama's not happy, nobody's happy, right? You're going to be happy. And then when you go to wake that baby up and say, hey, sweetheart, it's time to get up. You're going to have the best day you've ever had. That's what I told Gregory this morning. You know what? Chances are they're going to be in a good mood, and that morning's going to go smoothly. So I encourage you to get up early and do that extra planning. Verse 16 says, She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. The virtuous woman is very skillful and wise in her business dealings. You know, each one of you here tonight have talents and skills to bring to the table for your family. You do. 
Some of you here tonight are full-time homemakers, and your skills are essential in budgeting and taking care of your family. Your husband leans on you. Some of you here tonight work outside of the home. You work 40 or 50 hours outside of the home, and then you come home and you still make dinner, and you make sure the homework's done. It's bath time. You have a lot on your plate. But look what verse comes next. This is so cool. Verse 17. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. In the Amplified Bible, it says, she girds herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical strength for her God-given task, and she makes her arms strong and firm. Most of you here tonight, your plate's full. Raise your hand if your plate's full. Two wheels. Most of you, your plate is full. We all, that's just the world that we live in, isn't it? We all have different responsibilities. We all have different assignments. So, in light of that, how much time do we spend girding ourselves spiritually for the task that God has given us to do? Sometimes it is so easy for us to be busy running around, doing things for our family, doing things for God. And we forget that all he wants is to spend time with us. We forget that. God's desire from the beginning of time was to spend time with us in the cool of the evening. For his presence to be our source, our constant source, and for his voice to give us instruction. Ladies, we can only be the women that God has designed us to be if we spend time at his feet. Verse 18, she perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. 19, she stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle she's sewing. And in verse 24, it says she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. We see that this woman is skillful in her trade. She has business sense. She's very savvy, in fact. And she is busy from sun up to sun down, attending to her interests, her projects, and the needs of her family. In fact, I'm just tired talking about her. Are you? <laughs> but I want to remind you, she did not do all of these things in one day. So set, let yourself off the hook. She did not do all of these things in one day. These were done over the course of her lifetime. Does that make you feel better? It made me feel better anyway. There's a reason, though, this woman worked so hard. It's not to be rich and to go on her next shopping spree at Macy's. It's so that she can minister to others. That's the reason why she works so hard. Look at verse 20. She extends her hands to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. I love that about this church. Let me tell you something. Our church is good at that. And I am so blessed we are part of such a giving, loving church family. And ladies, even in looking at all that she's done, she's done a lot, right? We've got to remember this. It's not about the doing. It's about the heart. It's about the heart that she's doing these things with. The second reason why her husband can trust her is she has the heart qualities and the characteristics that inspire her activities and her work. The first heart quality we see, she has a servant's heart. She has a servant's heart. She's not only willing, but she chooses every day to serve her family and those around her. And we know when we have a servant's heart, when what? When our attitude is right. 
when our attitude's right. But when we start mumbling under our breath, we just lost our blessing. How about when we're at work and the boss asks us to do something menial or to do something that's below our intelligence level? How do we respond? The second heart quality, she has a quiet confidence. I love this one. Verse 21 says, She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry clothes, more clothes, for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. The New Living Translation says, She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She makes her own bread bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. One thing I've learned about my other self and other women's is that one of their top needs is security. Do you agree with me? Security. We want security for our future. And there's this quiet confidence that she knows it's going to be okay. She knows her family's going to be taken care of. Later on in verse 25, we see that she laughs at the future. She laughs. And let me tell you something. Don't you think for one minute it's because she's done all this. Okay? It's not. She knows that God has given her the strength to plan ahead. It is God that's allowed her to be disciplined. And in the end, though, it is ultimately in His hand. Your future is in God's hand. Know tonight that you are in the Father's hands. And no matter what your present situation looks like, you are a daughter of the King. Rest in quiet confidence that He will take care of you. He will take care of you. The third heart quality is she is strong in character. Verse 23 says, Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Well, there is a lot of truth in the statement. Behind every good man, there's a good woman. Well, a big reason why her husband is respected in the community is because of her reputation and her good character. Ladies, whether you're at your child's school or at the neighborhood pool or at church, we want to have a reputation that honors our eternal husband and our earthly husband. And I'll be honest with you, I personally, I want to have the reputation that I can be trusted. I want to be, have the reputation that I'm not lazy, that I take care of my family, that I have gracious words, that I'm kind. I mean it. That's, my, that's the desire of my heart. I want to be that kind of pastor's wife. Verse 25 continues in speaking about her character. It says, strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. You know, I couldn't help but find it was somewhat humorous that all throughout this message, it talks about her clothes. Did you notice that? The clothes she makes, the clothes she wears, the clothes she sells. There is something innate within all of us women. We like clothes. Did, are you with me? We like clothes. But we know that these clothes that they're talking about is not the clothes that you get at Dillard's or the loft. This type of clothes is what God clothes you with. It is the result of being in his presence. But you know what? Just like people notice your outward clothes, right? They compliment you and they like that outfit. Guess what? People also notice your spiritual clothes. Are you clothed with his strength? Are you clothed with his honor? Some of us here tonight may need a wardrobe change. 
Some people have been wearing garments of shame, garments of mourning, garments of depression and hopelessness. The word says in Isaiah 61, 3, for those who grieve in Zion, he wants to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And I'll tell you what, this was really hard on me. I finished at 3.15 today. I have really poured myself into this. But I felt like the Lord said to me to, this afternoon to tell you this. Strength and honor are your clothes. No matter what has happened in your life, from now on, you wear my label. You wear my label. He wants to say, you are my daughter, and I rejoice over you. So you receive that from the Father. The fourth heart quality is, she is wise and kind. Verse 26 says, she opens her mouth with wisdom, and her, on her tongue is the law of kindness. I love that verse. You know, the law of love and kindness is written here on the heart, but it shows itself in the tongue. There was this particular Friday, there was this man who told his wife that morning before he went to work that he was going to go and ask his boss for a raise. It was time. So they said goodbye, and when it was the right moment, he went to his boss, and the, wife, the boss said, absolutely, you're deserving of that. So he was really excited. He was going to go home and tell his wife, well, when he walked in, the wife had this beautiful candle-lit dinner all prepared, and he thought, hmm, did someone tip her off? He went into the kitchen. He said, babe, I got the raise. And she said, oh, I'm so excited. So they went in, and right beside his place setting was this little note, and it said, congratulations, darling. I knew you'd get the raise. These things will tell you how much I and the kids really love you. They enjoyed their meal together. They laughed. They had a good time. And as she got up to go get the dessert, this note, other note, fell out of her pocket. And she went on to get the dessert. He picked it up, and it said this. Don't worry about not getting the raise. You deserved it anyway. These things will tell you how much I and the kids really love you. What a wise... I think I may borrow this sometime. What a wise and kind woman. You know what? I had this epiphany. Our words of wisdom and kindness, you know what? All they are are vehicles of encouragement. Every time you speak something of wisdom and you speak something of kindness, it's just a vehicle of encouragement, isn't it? It is. I don't think this Proverbs 31 woman rants and raves as she is trying to get her point across. Do you? I think she is an economist of words. I had to borrow that. I thought that was pretty good. She's an economist of words. Sometimes the wisest thing we can do is simply keep our mouth shut and pray. Did Beverly Gino teach us that also? One of my daily prayers is that I will have gracious words. I pray that all the time. Lord, let my words be gracious. Let my words be gracious. The other day I had to chuckle at my daughter, Jenna. She is so funny. She was preparing to give a little speech at her best friend's wedding. And she said, Mom, I, I want my words to be mature. Like, I want them to be gracious, like you're always saying. I want them to be gracious. I thought that was cool. The fifth heart heart quality is she is discerning. She is discerning. Verse 27 says, she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. The Message Bible says, she keeps an eye on everyone in her household and keeps them all 
busy, and productive. I think this verse has a double meaning. Definitely, this virtuous woman is concerned with the daily operations of her home, isn't she? Also, I think we've all had those bad um, days in our home where we want to put a sign in the window that says, Martha Stewart doesn't live here. Have you ever felt like that? But I think the other meaning is this. She's concerned about the heart condition of her kids. She's concerned about the heart condition of her husband. She knows what's going on in her kids' lives. And I encourage you, do not be complacent. Do not be complacent. Don't be too tired to talk to them. Be nosy. Y yes, it's your right. Be no nosy. Know who their friends are. Volunteer in their activities. Plop on your bed with a thing of ice cream. Or take your daughter out to lunch and let them see them start revealing their heart to you. Verse 28 says, Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. This verse infers that these children have grown up. They're through those teen years and have some adult perspective and realize the sacrifices that she has made for their lives. And hopefully, ladies, our husbands and our children will appreciate the sacrifices that we have made for them. But ladies, I just want to encourage you, remember this is a proverb. It's, it's a principle. This proverb is a principle. It's not a promise. Regardless if they praise us or not, regardless, we will still strive to be that woman of God that God has called us to be. And you know what the real ultimate reward is anyway? When he says, well done. Amen. When he says, well done. Ladies, that will be your real reward. Amen. We're finally getting to our last point of why her husband can trust her. And I say the most important for last. Because she fears the Lord. She fears the Lord. Verse 30 says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I found it so interesting that this mother of King Lebuel did not talk one time about looks except in the end when she said that outward beauty is passing. I know we would all say here tonight that true beauty is found layers below the skin. True beauty is found in the heart and what comes out of the mouth. And I pray with all my heart that when my Gregory is looking for a wife, yeah, I know Gregory, he's going to notice her face. He's going to say, oh, she's cute. He's going to like her smile. But you know what? I pray that he looks into her soul. I pray that he will look for a young woman whose first love is Christ and her heart is to honor God in all she does. The last verse says, give her the fruit of her hands. Have you noticed over and over and over that the hands are mentioned? Whether it be at work, or it be at church, or it be at home, or it be in our community, women, we have an obligation to serve with our hands. We do. And it may be on this earth, in your home, or it may be in the gates of heaven, but you will receive the praise that is due you 
for the sacrifices that you have made. In closing tonight, I want to remind you that the Proverbs 31 woman is no superwoman. Take off the cape and burn it, okay? I also want to remind you that the 31 woman, she has bad days. Sometimes she loses it, and she has to say, I'm sorry to her family. She has to say, I'm sorry to her co-workers. And she even burns the rolls on occasion. <laughs> but this one thing that the Proverbs 31 woman does is found in Hebrews 12, verses 2 and 3. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Don't fix them on your husband. Don't fix them on your children. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him, right? Consider him when you're having a bad day, mom, when you're having a da bad day. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Ladies, I encourage you tonight, don't you dare take your eyes off of him. Don't you dare take your eyes off of him. Take time every day to get still. You'll burn out. I'm just going to tell you, I've done it. You will burn out if you do not be still and take time to be at His feet. Ask Him to fix the things that are broken in your life. I know some of you have broken relationships, and I know your hearts are wounded. Ask Him to fix it. And show him what's your part in fixing that. If there's an area of character that we discussed tonight that needs some work, ask him to help you mature in that area. At this time, we're going to begin a time of ministry. Maybe your prayer is, Lord, I have fallen down in an area in my life and I need to recommit myself to being that woman of God you've called me to be. Maybe your prayer is, I'm weary. Linda, I am so weary in well-doing. And you need to clothe yourself with His strength tonight. You need to clothe yourself in His strength. Or maybe, as I said a minute ago, you need to forgive someone in your family so you can begin to love them again. Be the one that goes to them and say, let's get this right. Let's get healing. Life's too short. Get it right. Let's stand right now. If our ministry team would come forward, please. If you need prayer tonight, there is someone that is willing and would love to pray with you. And I just want us to close in this time of prayer. And I want to us to bow before the Father. Lord, we give ourselves away to you this evening. We are nothing without you. And we ask you to renew us, to strengthen us, and to anoint us to serve you well and give ourselves away. Give us ears to hear and a heart that will listen. Open our eyes and change us so we can be the women you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, please come forward. This is your time to be healed.
to see 